Hi, I'm John, the currency engineer, and Sunblind asks, why would the federal government borrow money from the privately owned and operated Federal Reserve and pay interest on it when they could make their own interest free? Good question. Stupid answer from Roger Kovacini, and I take my piece out of him. Why would the federal government borrow money from the privately owned and operated Federal Reserve and pay interest on it when they could make their own interest free? And that is the guts of the issue that's facing humanity today. Why represent our collateral with their chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? This was by Sunblind uh, <clears throat> on October 21st, 2006. Asked this question at answerbag.com. And here's an answer from someone named Roger Covacini on October 21st. <clears throat> said, we do not have the power to make our own interest free. Oh, okay, an expert. You are referring to printing press money. Jeez, what other kind is there? Also called fiat money. Well, I could never understand what people meant by fiat money because it's meant to imply that it's based on nothing. Chips issued from the cage with no collateral going in and the government ordering you to take it. That's what everybody thinks fiat money means. But every dollar issued can be used to pay taxes. So there's no such thing as fiat money, really. That's when the government makes it. Oh, so if the banks make it, it's not fiat money. And if the government makes it, it's fiat money, thinks Roger. When private parties make it, it's called counterfeit. Oh, so when the government makes it, chips, it's called fiat money. And when private people make their own chips, that's called counterfeit chips. The results are the same. Whoever makes it gets it to trade a worthless piece of paper, a chip, for valuable goods and services. Yeah, every casino I know will trade you their worthless little chips for your hundred dollar bills. Ah! The only difference is that when a counterfeiter does it, he steals from one specific person. And when the government does it, each bill put into circulation steals a little bit from everyone. Assuming shift A inflation, too much money, and adding more money steals a little from everyone. Inflationary money is just a hidden tax increase, but a very bad sort. Inflationary money is addicting, and it's hard addiction to break. It often results in the fall of government, and it's being replaced by dictatorship. So, we shouldn't have any money, because the only kind of money we have inflates, right? Anyway... This is so stupid that I only bring it up because it's the standard stupid explanation that people who think there's too much money out there always make. You talk about, hey, why should the government borrow new chips from the banks and pay interest when the government could print up their own chips? And the guy goes, printing chips is bad. Well, that wasn't the issue. Because if it's bad for the government to print chips and cause inflation, why isn't it bad for the banks to print chips and cause inflation? And why would it be so much worse for the government to print chips and cause inflation than for the private banks to print chips and cause inflation? The question was, why should government borrow privately owned banks, chips, and pay interest when they could print their own and not pay interest? The question had to do with how do we save the interest by substituting bank printing for private, I mean, government printing for private bank printing. And people who think that there's already too much money in circulation just go scream inflation at the creation of any new money without realizing that the banks are creating it too. We're talking about the two different ways of creating chips at interest and not. And this moron's got to go scream, can't print chips. Didn't even answer the question. So, Sunblind, yes, good question. Why would the feds give away the power, the license to manufacture money to a private group and then get in line to borrow it from them at interest 
and tax you and me to pay them interest? Great question. Well, I answered to the guy who thinks it's too much money. Yes, economics teaches that more money chasing the goods is shift A inflation. You've got money, collateral, inflation is an increase in the money chasing the goods, right? Shift A. Aggravated by issuing more money. But there also exists a shift B inflation. Gee, if it's not this, what else can it be? Gee, nobody ever thought to think about this. They all figure it's got to be this. Can't be this, because nobody ever taught this in the economics textbooks. They only teach this inflation shift. Chasing less goods after foreclosure. And it's solved by issuing more money. Economics doesn't teach shift B inflation. The banking systems engineer does. YouTube for shift B inflation. You'll get my video. Now, explain what's wrong with issuing new chips to match new collateral of wealth and human time. What's inflationary about new chips into the game backed up by new collateral at the cage? Look it, we have economists sitting at the poker game and every time somebody comes to the table with a new rack of chips, they go nuts, they get inflation, inflation. We go slow down, slow down. There's 500 in chips, money at the bank. Don't worry, it's backed up. But economists, every time they see new chips, they gotta go inflation. So even at a poker game where it's really funny, so anyway, this is the response to why would the federal government borrow from private banks when they, gave, when they could print it themselves? Good question from Sunblind. Stupid answer from Ra Roger Kovacini.